uh, my mother uh, was a feminist before anybody used that term. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother was a feminist mm -hmm. before anybody used that term. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of contact with both those two women, both very strong, mm -hmm. uh, determined, bright, mm -hmm. competent mm -hmm. uh, women. Um, my mother divorced my father when I was two years old. And I mean, you just didn't do that at that time. I mean, she was a source of uh, disapprobation. <laughs> she was a bad woman uh, to have done that. Um, but it was the right thing to do, and she knew it was the right thing to do. Uh, and so uh, she essentially brought me up. I mean, she didn't remarry until I was 12, so... Mm -hmm. We had a lot of time, just the two of us, so she was a wonderful role model, mm -hmm. very supportive, mm -hmm. um, tough because mm -hmm. she had to be, mm -hmm. um, but a very strong feminist, very determined, wouldn't let anyone tell her what to do mm -hmm. um, because she usually knew what to do and she was usually right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so that was important to me and I can rem still remember my grandmother telling me, oh, I was just young, uh, maybe five or six, you always have to have your own money, Sandra. Always have your own bank account and don't tell anybody how much money you have. That's your business. Um, and obviously a practice that, that she <laughs> followed, I assume. <laughs> anyway, so, so that was, so I was a feminist too then in lots of ways. And I can remember being at the University of Saskatchewan playing basketball for the uh, university team. And uh, a member, I guess I was president of the Women's Athletic Board. And we had a budget. Uh, and we would, there was the Student Representative Council and the Women's Athletic Board was part of that and there was a Men's Athletic Board and they were part of that. And I can remember being incensed at meetings at the difference in the budgets of the Men's Athletic Board and the Women's Athletic Board and arguing that case. So uh, there was you know, there was already a firm groundwork, I suppose, mm -hmm. there before mm -hmm. I ever came to uh, to Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was a significant event when I arrived here. Okay. Uh, my husband and I came. He was a graduate student at McGill. He had not yet completed his uh, dissertation. So. Uh, but this was closer to Montreal than, <laughs> than Saskatchewan was, so he was thrilled to, to come here. And uh, we decided we had to, we brought some furniture with us, but not, uh, not a bedroom suite. So we went to, I think it was Simpsons, to get a bedroom suite. And we found one, and uh, so I wanted to buy it. Uh, and... Uh, I forget, uh, I, I, I wanted to put it on a Simpsons credit card and I didn't have a Simpsons credit card so I wanted to get one right then and put this furniture on it. So we went to the office that serves customers and um, they said, oh fine, no problem, here are the forms, just fill these out and I did. Uh, but at some point Somebody said, well, your husband's name has to be on the card. It, it's his card, so he has to sign. And I said, that doesn't make any sense because he's unemployed. You don't want him <laughs> taking responsibility. In the meantime, my husband is fading away <laughs> because he doesn't want to play this game at all. <laughs> so... Um, but I'm calm at first. At first, I'm quite calm and reasonable and rational. No, he's unemployed. I'm the one with the job. I can verify that I have the job. I'm the one with the salary. Um, 
Well, it didn't matter. That was irrelevant. I mean, he could have been a homeless person, and his name was going to go on this card. And so then I got silly. And, I mean, I got cross and silly, and I did things like tell them that I was a Canadian citizen, and they had no right to deny me this, this service. Uh, and then it went from bad to worse. Not only am I a Canadian, but my parents were born in Canada, and my grandparents were born in Canada, and I have been paying income tax for any number of years, and I have spent hundreds of dollars at Simpsons, and I will never spend five more cents here, ever, and I will tell everyone I know not to shop here. And my voice is, of course, going up. And this poor person behind the counter said, can I get a supervisor? Why don't you? <laughs> Please do. So the supervisor came and I essentially said, well, I wouldn't touch this bedroom furniture. You know, you can, I don't care what you do with it, but you're not sending it away with me. Um, and the supervisor said, no, we'll put it in your name. So I won the day but at some personal cost, uh, and I thought, this can't, this is not right. This is not fair. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, I mean, yes, I had the previous exposure to the mm -hmm. difference in budgets and so on mm -hmm. uh, as, as a, a student at, uh, at Saskatchewan, but I mean, I was a student then. That wasn't, quote, real life, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this was real life, and I, I was so struck by that, I've never forgotten it. I've told this mm -hmm. story to all kinds of people, um, because it was very significant. It was, I guess, the point at which uh, I became committed to pursuing this issue, uh, not as a side a, you know, a, a <clears throat> excuse me, a side interest, mm -hmm. but as a main thrust for my personal and professional life. Mm 